So the second and the third leads to the formation of alkane, while the first and the fourth leads to the formation of alkyl halide. Now I want you to focus attention on the first and on the set on the on the fourth. So this first and fourth, which leads to the formation of alkyl halide, this reaction there is something very important which is called Markovnikov's rule that we need to understand. This Markovnikov's rule. It states that during the reaction of alkene with hydrogen halide, that hydrogen from the hydrogen halide will enter into the carbon of the alkene with more number of hydrogen, while the halogen from the hydrogen halide will enter into the carbon of the alkene with less number of hydrogen. Good day students and you are welcome back to this channel. In today's lesson, I'm going to be running through very quickly um, through the some of the practice problems in organic chemistry, all right? And like I have here, the question says, give the products of the following chemical reactions. And I have about four of them here. So the first one is a situation whereby alkene, this compound is alkene, alkene reacts with hydrogen chloride. What and what will it give? The second is alkyl iodide, actually, actually alkyl halide, precisely alkyl iodide and alkyl iodide again reacting with sodium in the presence of ether to give dash and dash. So what are the products? Third, I'm going, I have, this is a carbonic compound, precisely butanone, reacting with amalgamated zinc in the presence of concentrated hydrochloric acid to now give what? The fourth is alkene again reacting with hydrogen bromide in the presence of peroxide to give what? All right, very important. Now I want you to understand that this the first one, which is the reaction of alkene and hydrogen chloride. The, the reaction is called hydrohalogenation of alkene. The second one is is the reaction of the, the second one, which is the reaction of sodium um, and alkyl halide in the presence of ether, is called Watts reaction. The third one is, is Clemenson reduction reaction because this is the reaction of ketone and amalgamated zinc and conch HCl. So this is um, Clemenson reduction reaction. And the third one is also hydrohalogenation of alkene. So the, fourth, the first one and the fourth one are similar. This is hydrohalogenation of alkene. This is also hydrohalogenation of alkene. This is Watts reaction or Watts synthesis. And this is Clemenson reduction reaction. Now, very importantly, the first one, which is hydrohalogenation of alkene, this reaction leads to the formation of alkyl halide. Again, this one, which is also hydrohalogenation of alkene, also leads to the reaction of alkyl halide. Now, this reaction, the third one, which is a, a, a Clemenson reduction reaction, leads to the formation of alkane. And the second one, which is a Watts reaction or Watts synthesis, leads to the formation of alkane. So the second and the third leads to the formation of alkane, while the first and the fourth leads to the formation of alkyl halide. Now I want you to focus attention on the first and on the set on the on the fourth. So this first and fourth, which leads to the formation of alkyl halide, this reaction, there is something very important which is called Markovnikov's rule that we need to understand. So this Markovnikov's rule it states that during the reaction of alkene with hydrogen halide, that hydrogen from the hydrogen halide will enter into the carbon of the alkene with more number of hydrogen, while the halogen from the hydrogen halide will enter into the carbon of the alkene with less number of hydrogen. So um, this is hydrohalogenation of alkene. Sorry, hydro. of alkene. Okay, so this is hydrohalogenation of alkene. Like I said before, if this reacts with this, it will give us alkyl halide. Now, but now we having two question marks here means that we are going to provide two answers of for this particular reaction. So the first answer is going to be the product when this reaction obeys Markovnikov's rule. And the second answer is going to be the product when this reaction does not obey Markovnikov's rule. And what do we mean by that? But first, before we advance, I want you to understand that these two species, that is the hydrogen and the chlorine that is going to come out from this hydrogen chloride, is going to enter in this carbon and in this carbon only. The reason is because this carbon and this carbon, both of them are saturated, meaning they are 
sp3 hybridized why these two that are unsaturated are sp2 hybridized so if you've not watched my video in hybridization quickly search for it because i've made a video on that okay so now this carbon atom has just one hydrogen and this carbon atom has two hydrogens so this hydrogen from here we enter in this carbon atom that has more hydrogen and this chlorine we enter in this carbon that has less hydrogen if that happens that means it has obeyed Markovnikov's rule. So the product when this obeys Markovnikov's rule is going to be this CH3, CH2, CH, Cl, then CH3. Now notice this. This CH3, CH2 are this CH3, CH2. So I wrote them as they are because the reaction is not going to take place where they are. So now this is CH here. So chlorine now entered here to make it CH, Cl. Very important. So this is actually Cl. And now, finally, this hydrogen now enters here, therefore I have CH3 here. So the name of this compound is nothing but 2-methylbutene. Sorry, 2-chlorobutene, I meant to say. 2-chlorobutene. So 2-chlorobutene is the product when Markovnikov's rule is obeyed. Now, the next one, the, so this answer now is what is going to be here. So what should be here would be when this hydrogen now enters here and this chlorine now enters here. So if that happens, it means that Markovnikov's rule is no longer obeyed. And the answer to that problem is going to be CH3, CH2, CH2, then CH2, CL. All right? So this is also what I'm going to have for here. So the answer to this problem is going to be one chloro. So one chlorobutene. So this one chlorobutene is going to be the product when Markovnikov's rule is not obeyed. And while two chlorobutene is going to be the product when Markovnikov's rule is obeyed. So simply put, this and this are the answers we are going to put in here. All right. So very quickly for the second one. The second one is a situation whereby propyl iodide, two molecules of propyl iodide, reacts with two atoms of sodium in the presence of Eta as a solvent to give us two things. All right. So I want, like I said before, this reaction leads to the formation of a symmetrical alkane. All right. It leads to the formation of a symmetrical alkane. And how is this going to happen? And of course, we have two question marks here. Now, I want you to understand that this eta is just the only contribution this eta is doing is just as a solvent and again as a catalyst. And of course, a catalyst is that that speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction and at the end of the day remains unchanged. All right, so this will not be altered. So at the end of the chemical reaction, this is going to remain as it is. So the only thing that is entering or maybe that will alter the reaction is just this, this sodium will enter here. But this reaction, which is what synthesis, or reaction, So the second one I told you is what is also known as wood synthesis. The name of the person that invented this reaction is Woods. So wood synthesis or Woods reaction is a situation whereby a key halide reacts with sodium in the presence of ether to give us alkane. That's the primary uh, compound that will be formed in this reaction. So how the reaction will go is this. So this and this, this one and this one, I can write I can write it like this: 2CH3CH2CH2I. So this compound now, which is this, is actually reacting with two of sodium in the presence of ether as a catalyst. So when this happens, what will happen is that this iodine will leave for the whole of this to stay. So remember there are two molecules of this compound, all right? The, actually, if I remove this iodine, this iodine will leave, this sodium will abstract this iodine to form Na. I, to form two molecules of iodine, of sodium iodide. This sodium will abstract iodine to form two molecules of sodium iodide, while these two molecules of propyl will now arrange themselves to form alkene. And hence, I'm going to have a symmetrical alkene like this. So this is a symmetrical alkane, this first part and this second part. So both of them will now combine, and this, the name of this compound is nothing but a zinc. 
Okay, so this is what I have for this reaction. So the, the first answer, the, fir the first question mark stands for this hexane. The second question mark stands for this two molecules of sodium iodide. All right, very quickly, what about the third one? Like I said before, the third one is nothing but a uh, clemency reduction reaction. And this reaction also leads to the formation of alkane. It is a reaction whereby carbonic compounds react with amalgamated zinc in the presence of conch hydrochloric acid to give us alkane. So if you now watch carefully, the, the primary or maybe the main product is what they are concerned. So that was why we have only one question mark. So what will happen here is that this carbonic group or maybe, yeah, this carbonic carbon here, that is this carbon double bonded to oxygen, will simply uh, 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 attract hydrogen. So reduction is actually going to occur here. No wonder it is called Clemensin reduction reaction. Clemensin because the name of the person that invented this reaction is Clemensin. Reduction because the reduction actually takes place, which is nothing but the addition of hydrogen or the removal of oxygen. So this oxygen will be removed such that hydrogen from this amalgamated zinc together with, uh, sorry, so that hydrogen from this hydrochloric acid will now enter in here, all right? So if that happened, I'm going to have nothing but um, CH3, CH2. Now this CH3 and CH2 are this CH3 and this CH2. Now this C, the one day to go, this oxygen is going to leave such that I'm going to have C, now H2. So two hydrogens are going to come, then finally CH3. So this CH2 now is, is the one that is, this CO was, this CO changes to CH2. So the hydrogens entered here, the hydrogens and the hydrogen that entered actually came from this um, hydrochloric acid. So that's actually the whole idea. A situation whereby a carbonic compound reacts with uh, amalgamated zinc in the presence of hydrochloric acid to give alkene. And precisely the, the name of this alkene is nothing but butane. Okay, so that is it. Now, finally, the fourth one is a reaction between alkene and hydrogen bromide. So this fourth one is very similar to the first case we've seen. Now, but there's a special thing here. There is a peroxide present. And now we've seen what is Markovnikov's rule. There's also something that is known as a anti Markovnikov's rule or peroxide effect. So peroxide effect or anti Markovnikov's rule is going to take place in the fourth one. So anti Markovnikov's. anti Markovnikov's rule, also or we call it peroxide effect. So this anti Markovnikov's rule or peroxide effect is a situation whereby, normally it's a situation whereby if this hydrogen bromide reacts with a compound like this, hydrogen will no longer enter into the carbon with more number of hydrogen, but in the carbon with less number of hydrogen. And bromine will now, in turn, enter in the carbon with less, sorry, more number of hydrogen. Ordinarily, if this peroxide, in fact, what causes peroxide effect or anti Markovnikov's rule is because of the presence of this peroxide. All right. So this peroxide here could be either sodium peroxide. This peroxide can be Na2O2, which is sodium peroxide, or it could be H2O2, which is a hydrogen. Peroxide. But because peroxide is present, that is the reason why Markovnikov's rule will no longer take place. So it therefore means that opposite of Markovnikov's rule is anti-Markovnikov's rule or peroxide effect. So since peroxide is present, hydrogen will now enter into the carbon with less number of hydrogen and bromine will enter into the carbon with more number of hydrogen. Don't forget that this reaction will only take place between these two carbon atoms because these two carbon atoms are already saturated and hence they will not undergo any reaction. Okay, so writing the products that should be here, we are going to write these two uh, uh, carbon atoms as they are, CH3, CH2. Now, coming here, I'm going to have CH2. So hydrogen would have entered here if not for this, if not for the presence of this peroxide. So the hydrogen would have entered there, but because of the presence of peroxide, hydrogen will now enter in this carbon with less number of hydrogen. Next, I'm going to have CH2 here, all right? And now, this one now, that, that is CH2 already, bromine will now enter there. Therefore, I'm going to have CH2 now BR. All right, so this is the name of the, this is the compound I'm going to have. So this compound is supposed to be here. And the name of this compound is talking about 2 bromobutane.
one bromobutane rather one bromobutane because this bromine is on carbon number one all right so that is it okay so finally um in conclusion the the, the compound i'm going to have here is going to be uh one bromo one sorry one chlorobutane and two chlorobutane respectively and what i'm going to have here is already this this hexane and these two molecules of sodium iodide and finally here what i'm going to have here is butane and as for this one what i'm going to have here is one bromo butane so this is actually the whole idea about this um, reaction so thank you and god bless you for watching the video to the end and please if you find this video interesting do well to subscribe like share and even comment on my youtube page thank you